back on the Young Turks. Now we're going to talk to an interesting guest about uh, foreign policy. Ronald Lassmus is the author of The Little War That Shook the World, Georgia, Russia, and the Future of the West. Uh, Ron, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, we appreciate your time. So, uh, first, let me ask you about uh, your title, The Little War That Shook the World. Did it really shake the world? It seemed fairly small. Well, originally I wanted the title to be The Little War That Changed the World, and it quickly became clear that it hadn't changed the world, so then I fell back and shook the world. I think many of us who were on the ground or sort of um, saw the war up close or were involved in the events up to the war thought it should have change the world or should have at least rang an alarm bell that something important was happening but this was one of the reasons I wrote the book is I felt that this is a war that everyone wanted to forget and sort of sweep under the rug without thinking about why it had happened and what we should learn from it so that was one of the reasons I wrote the book okay to make sure it wasn't forgotten completely uh, yeah I think a lot of people forgot it to some degree because it seemed kind of boring I mean it just okay when America does a award, we do it right, man. We stay there forever and drain our treasury of all of our money. I mean, these guys do a war in five days, snooze fest. Well, you know, Georgia's a little country. Uh, the war lasted five days. Russian troops were on the edge of Tbilisi. People were waiting to see whether they came and took the capital, and they stopped. But, you know, Georgia was also a close ally of the United States. They're fighting with us in Afghanistan. This was a little country that essentially was trying to break out of the what Russia claims to be its sphere of influence and go west and um, America was its big supporter and um, but you know it happened in August it happened during the Olympics I think it was deliberately timed so they caught the West sleeping at the wheel it was a lame duck Bush administration I don't think any of this was an accident but you know we had we had come to think that wars in Europe don't happen anymore and you know, we had a war the Russians broke one of the cardinal rules of European security that you don't change borders by force and no one did anything so, so well, let, let me understand that so you know there's disagreement over these two districts right and right. Um, who who controlled it in the beginning who started the agitation and what was the final result well when the Soviet Union broke up um, <clears throat> Georgia became free and independent again these two provinces, two or three years later, had wars in where the Russians supported the separatists, in part as a way to try to get back control over Georgia. The situation was frozen from the early 90s uh, until a few years ago, and we agreed to allow Russian peacekeepers on the ground. But when I say the word peacekeeper, you tend to think of somebody who's neutral between party A and party B. The Russian peacekeepers were fully on the side of the separatists. Now, the more when we, in 2004, the Rose Revolution take place, you have this young group of young Georgians, Western trained, wanting to take their country west. And from that point on, Russia's position, and in every conversation with the Georgian leadership, Russia said, look, you want help with the conflicts, you have to decide. Are you with us, or are you with the Americans? And this is a history of <clears throat> Russia trying to break the determination of this country to go west, this country trying to go west, and these, these conflicts become the Achilles heels of Georgia, which Russia uses to leverage to try to get control over these countries and ultimately to provoke the Georgians into a war in which Georgia could never win. Do you think that they provoked them in a war by doing what? Well, the... Um, what happened in the run-up to August 7th is that the Russians systematically over the previous year, and particularly over the previous, since February 2008 to August, started moving in armed forces that were illegal, building up the South Ossetians, moving forces on the border, basically assembling an invasion force on the Russian side of the border, and telling the Georgians, we're going to take these provinces away from you bit by bit by simply putting so much force in there that you can't do anything. Now, in one so of these... Then, can I interrupt for a second there? Then it seems that the real problem was allowing the Russians in as peacekeepers in the first place. Because once you do that, they could pour in so many troops that they could, in effect, take the country anyway. Well, when we look back, which is what I try to do in my book, the first big mis mistake we made was exactly that. Allowing the Russians to be peacekeepers in name, but not peacekeepers in in reality. 
then we recognized the independence of Kosovo, something I supported, but Vladimir Putin said to us, if you recognize Kosovo, I'm going to act against Georgia and these provinces. And we thought he was bluffing, but he wasn't bluffing. But then is, Ron, is he wrong then? I mean, because he's, it, it's a decent case to make, to say, look, I've got a lot of uh, ethnic Russians in these two provinces within Georgia, and uh, if Kosovo can be independent, and I think these guys are being you know, oppressed by the Georgian majority here, why can't they be independent? Well, the difference was in Kosovo, of course, the Albanians were the overwhelming majority, whereas in Abkhazia, the Georgians had been the majority, and the Abkhaz were the minority. And they <clears throat> were they Russians? They weren't Russians. They were Abkhaz that the Russians had given passports in an attempt to create the precedent so that if the Georgians killed any of them, the Russians could say what they did, ah, oh, you've killed Georgians, that gives us the pretense. When I first went to these, I remember the first time I went to South Ossetia, which is where the war started, I met the South Ossetian leadership, and they were all real South Ossetians. But every time I went after that, they started to turn into blue-eyed, blonde-haired, silver-haired Russian, usually intelligence officials. So Russia had taken over these provinces. But still, under international law, they were part of Georgia. We said they were part of Georgia, but there was no, you know, we, could, we would say they were part of Georgia, and we support Georgia's territorial integrity, but we never did anything to change the facts on the ground. And we never, the Georgians, for example, after the war, we put, or actually the Europeans put 200 monitors on the ground to watch what's happening. The Georgians asked for monitors three months before the war happened, but no one cared enough to do it. So there were a number of relatively modest, inexpensive steps we could have taken that would have reduced the room for mischief and maybe stopped this. But we weren't paying attention. We're, and we're, we're talking to Ron Asmus. Uh, he is former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for European Affairs under President Clinton. He's contributed to the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, and New Republican. His book is The Little War That Shook the World. Uh, Ron, at this point, uh, does Russia, in essence, control those two provinces? Uh, Russia completely controls those two completely. provinces. And the big question we face as Americans is, you know, 20 years ago, the Berlin Wall falls, the Iron Curtain collapses. And at that time, we all signed up, including the Russians, to sort of a new set of rules of the game on how Europe would be run. And part of that was supposed to be no spheres of influence, Countries could choose their own destiny, which who they wanted to be allied with. And the real, reality is, is Russia has been moving for the last four or five years away from those rules. And we have to decide, do we try to uphold those rules? Do we try to pressure Russia? Or do we just acquiesce and say, you know, these uh, provinces, these countries aren't that important. Ron, isn't uh, the reality... Fighting for them. Isn't the reality in the re real politic of this that if they whether it's Russia or China or whoever else it might be, that if they take small amounts of land uh, or s small provinces or maybe even small countries, that we're not going to do a damn thing about it and they're going to get to keep them. But if they go after something larger, well, that, that affects the rest of us enough that then we might have a real standoff? Well, I hope that's not the case. And that's, of course, one of the reasons I wrote the book, because the history of Europe and other parts of the world often is exactly what you said. When people were doing this to little countries, we didn't care enough. We had to wait until it was a big country, until we really woke up and said something is happening here that we should try to prevent or stop. I'm ringing the alarm bell and saying, look, this, was, uh, this, this isn't something you can just overlook. And, you know, the, real, the sad reality here is that at the end of the day, this is a war in which I argue no one's a winner. The Georgians obviously lose. I don't think the Abkhaz and South Ossetians are better off in Russia, even though it obviously won militarily. It has sown the seeds for more separatism and instability in the region. This part of the world is going to be more unstable five years from now than it is today. And um, if you think that, what are we going to do? Just wait until it gets worse and worse until we have to do something. Well, well Ron, then, you know, in the very short period of time we have left here, less than a minute, what can we do about it? I mean, what are we going to do, stop them militarily? No, right? No, what we should do is... <clears throat> draw the line and say we're never going to recognize these territories because they were illegally taken. Two, help Georgia strengthen itself so that it survives. And third, we should, we should just try to force Russia to stick to the rules of the game and rethink. I mean, the, the $64,000 question is can we eventually convince Russia that it can have influence over its neighbors by cooperating and partnering with them 
as opposed to beating up on them, intimidating them, and eventually invading them. Because until it learns that, you know, we're going to have problems and there's going to be instability on its borders. That's why Russia doesn't have stability on its borders. All right. The author is Ron Asmus, and the book is The Little War That Shook the World, Georgia, Russia, and the Future of the West. Ron, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate Thank you for having me on your show.